welcome dear learners to the new session of web technology in this session we will cover css the difference between id and classes and anatomy of a style rule i am anurag bhat assistant director computer it uttarakhand open university haldwani the learning objectives of today's session are what is css examples of css ways of adding css differentiation between id and classes we will cover ids the concepts of classes will also be covered in this session and last but not the least anatomy of a style rule so to start with what is css cascading style sheets affectionately called css it is a simple design language intended to simplify the process of making web pages viewable in another words we can say that to make some web pages viewable or we want to put some viewing actions into it we introduce a design language which is simple in nature and it is affectionately called css css that is cascading style sheets it handles the appearances of web pages CSS also allows to control text colors, font styles, spacing between paragraphs, column sizes and layouts, background images or colors used, layout designs, display variations on different devices and screen sizes and many other things. So, we can elaborate it in other words that whenever we want some spacing between paragraphs we have column sizes we have layouts we have background images or if we want to uh, vary the display uh, display contents on different devices for example if we are using it on laptop it will be having uh, some different di uh, display variation and in mobile it is having some different variations so depending on the devices and screen sizes we can have display variations and css is very helpful in it here we have some css example we have html tag then head then style then body we have put background color as pink you can see in the picture also and the figure also then h1 heading color is white and then text uh, text align is left the the text is aligned towards left then p paragraph then font family is Arial and font uh, size is 20 pixels. Then curly braces are closed and then style tag is closed and head tag is closed. Now body tag. Body in this body we have H1 as my first CSS style and H1 tag is closed again. Then paragraph tag. This is my paragraph and paragraph is closed again. Then body tag is closed and HTML tag is closed. So in this particular uh, pink uh, output, pink colored output is there my first css style it is in the uh, it is in white color because in h1 we have put the color as white and this is my paragraph this is in the black color so and, and the text aligned is in the left aligned we will discuss ways of adding css the css can be added to html documents in three po uh, possible ways first one is inline second one is internal third one is external so let us elaborate it one by one so in inline by using the style attribute inside the html elements so the style attribute always reside inside the html elements in case of inline method next method is internal method in internal method by using a style element in the head section so that style element always reside in the head section and it is uh, called as internal method next one is last but not the least is external method so in external method we can use a link element to link to an external css file so in this case we provide a link element that will directly be linking to an external css file which is not in uh, reside in this particular file but it is somewhere located to the external location and it will link to that particular external css file 
the most common way to add CSS is to keep the styles in external CSS files. So external CSS file is very popular and very common way to add CSS. This is the diagram and the pictorial representation of these methods. Uh, types of CSS are inline CSS, internal CSS and external CSS. Now we will see how ID and classes are different from each other. Differentiation between ID and classes. CSS stands for cascading style sheet and is used in conjunction with HTML which is hypertext markup language as a powerful tool for creating web design and layout. The HTML code uses the CSS ID and class attributes to add any number of styles to enhance your web experience. So it is a very powerful tool for creating the web design we have discussed it and layout also. The HTML code which uses the CSS ID and class attributes. So class attributes and CSS ID are two major attributes to add any number of styles. So we are using, we will use rather uh, CSS ID and class attributes in order to make our sheet very very stylish and to enhance our web experience. So the ID and classes both impart enhancements toward our web experience by the use of so many kind of styles. Here we are having header.callout, hash header.callout, then dev id equals to header, class equals to callout. And uh, now div tag is closed. Uh, in second method, we are having hash header.callout, then curly braces, then div id equals to header, class equals to callout. Now we are having div class equals to callout again and then div tag is closed and outer div tag is closed here uh, at last. Now what are IDs? Each element can have only one ID. We can apply an unlimited number of styles to each ID. For example, if we are having some ID and we can apply unlimited number of styles to that particular ID. Each page can contain only one element with this particular ID. Uh, in another words, we can say that each page can be having only one element with this ID. So no other elements are allowed, only one element with this ID is allowed. Here this ID then we have declarations h1 that is the selector or the heading part then curly braces color is the property and red is its value then semicolon font size font size is another property or attribute which we have some we can put some value and then one pixel one pixel is the value so like in previous sessions we have covered that there are the combination of property and value, property and value, etc. So for any property, we have to provide some value. In uh, this particular uh, ID declaration, we have color as red value and the property font size is having one pixel value. Now ID, ID uses hash in CSS. This is, a, uh, this is a very uh, important symbol which we will uh, discuss. It can also be used as an identifier for HTML jump links. We can have jump links called hyperlinks. We can jump to some external uh, entities. This allows us to jump from one place to another place within the same web page and can also be used to create a well designed table of contents. So here we have this selector, this is alt, color is blue, text align is left align, font size which we have given 100% and then we are having that paragraph id equals to alt, we have provided that alt into the id and this is some blue, uh, this is some blue text from reference then design and then paragraph tag is closed. So here this id tells which style is to use we have to use which style it is 
tell, told by that particular ID. So here is the concept of ID. And overall, this is class ID selector. I hope that this example is clear to you. Now IDs are in continuation to it. Below is an example of an ID used in a CSS section of HTML. For example, we have hash top, uh, background color, hash FFF, and then padding. Padding has a value of 30 pixels. So it is an example of an ID which is used in a CSS section of HTML. Now let us discuss about classes. You can use the same class for multiple elements. So it is different from the uh, other case that in a particular uh, same class, uh, we can use the same class or same class can be used for multiple elements. Class names are case sensitive. So uh, we have to uh, be very, very particular about the case sensitivity of the class names. Classes uses a single code dot operator or dot before the name in CSS as shown in the image. Here we have the CSS class that is dot blue. Definition start with a uh, dot. We have elaborated with the green color. Then color is blue. We have provided color value as blue and then curly braces are closed. So h1 class equals to blue, then center aligned heading and center aligned heading is of the blue color and heading is closed again. So here we have CSS class exam classes. There is no limit to the number of styles that can be applied to each class. There is no limit. So many number of styles can be applied to uh, any class. Multiple classes allowed for the same element. So we can have multiple classes are allowed for the same element. We, uh, th that means same element can be accessing, can be having so many kind of classes, uh, more than one classes. Below is an example of a class used in the CSS section of HTML. Here we have dot introduction then curly braces open. Color is green, font weight is bold. This is also the uh, property called font weight. We can have bold, italic, any kind of thing. Font is 30 pixel Arial and Times New Roman and Sans Serif is the font name. Again, the curly brace is closed. So here it is an example of a class used in the section CSS section of HTML. Anatomy of a class of a style rule. Below is the CSS rule which targeted H1 elements. Here we have H1, then heading is there, then curly braces that is class, color is red. So the curly braces is closed again. Okay, now we have covered uh, up to anatomy of a style rule. In continuation to this, in the earlier figure, a selector with one property and one value. These are the core concepts of CSS. Then uh, we are having like we previously also discussed that we have one property and it is well followed by its value. In this example, H1 is the selector name and color is the property and red is the value. Anatomy of a style rule is elaborated with this example also that we have P, curly braces open, then some body is there and then the curly braces are closed. So that particular P is a selector. In this, uh, between the curly braces, in the body section or declaration section, we have property, then value, then unit. Unit is pixel, value is 10, property is margin. In next line in declaration, font size we have put 12 pixel. In font family, that is also a property, we have provided Vardana. So Vardana is the font here. Selector rules, separated by semicolon. So rules are separated by the semicolon. After 10 pixels, we have semicolon. After 12 pixels, we have semicolon. After Vardana, we have semicolon. So it is a selected rule separated by the semicolons. Now, last but not the least, it is the closing curly brace. Selected rules are surrounded by the curly braces. 
So I hope that this anatomy of a style rule is clear to you. Anatomy of style rule is again discussed. Between these three concepts are various special characters. There are braces around properties and values, colons separating properties and values, and semicolons after values. Each of them make it easier for browsers to parse and understand the CSS code. You can group multiple properties under the same rule that is selector using curly braces. The semicolon tells the parser where the value ends. Likewise, we have this figure also. This might seem a little too complicated for a simple selector like the one value, but it makes sense once you start using more complex selector names with more properties and more complex values. H1 is the selector, then style is color blue, property and value combination, then another style is font style, we have put it as italic, then another, it, in uh, another way it is having property and value. So we have two properties mentioned here, color and font, uh, font style, and we have provided them blue and italic respectively, the values. Let's illustrate with a more complicated example. Now we have H1, H2, S3, color is red, background color is uh, hash, uh, hash triple zero, you can provide any kind of code for the background color. Margin is 10 pixel x to 5 pixel, so that are the margins. And then curly braces cold, uh, is closed, then H2, color is green, curly braces is closed again. So this is the most uh, more complicated example in which we have H1, H2 and S3 and uh, we have defined color, background and margin and H2 we have particularly uh, defined in another way that color is green for the H2. Here now we have multiple selectors. The first selector is for multiple elements, multiple properties, multiple values. Now you can see why we need CSS syntax rules to be able to parse our statements properly. Now uh, again let us revise p is the property v, uh, value is the value provided for the property and then uh, this is called property color background color. So we can provide multiple values and multiple property values. So first selector is for multiple elements, multiple property and multiple values. Now points to remember. CSS stands for cascading style sheets we have covered in this session. CSS describes how HTML elements are displayed on the screen, paper or other media. CSS saves a lot of work. We can control the layout of multiple web pages simultaneously. Pa parallelly, we can have multiple web pages layout which we can control. External style sheets are also stored in CSS files. The learning outcomes of this particular session is that learners have an understanding of CSS. They can understand the ways of adding CSS and I hope that differentiate uh, difference between ID and classes are clear and the learner can have a basic understanding of anatomy of style rule after this particular session. I hope that this session will be very beneficial for you. Thank you.